Hi YouTube, it's Chanelli here. In this week's video, I got a chance to sit down and talk to Nick Majuli, who is the writer of a weekly blog called Of Dollars and Data. It is such a good blog, and I've been reading it for a little while now, and I try to go back and like binge read it if I ever like don't read a couple of weeks in a row because it is actually a really well-written blog. And I was actually shocked to find out Nick has not always been um, comfortable writing. And so um, I wanted to sit down with him and talk to him about his blog and how he came up with the ideas for his writing because he has a unique writing style. If you guys check out his blog, it's linked below. Um, after kind of hearing his story, you'll probably be a lot more interested to check it out. And it's just the way that he tells stories and kind of hooks you with the story first, but then backs up a lot of his points with a lot of data. Um, and he does a lot of stuff with cool charts and um, moving images and things to kind of like make the data interactive, which I think is really cool. Um, and so, yeah, he talked a lot about his blog when we sat down. He was really kind enough to like agree to sit down with me and share um, some of his thoughts and experiences in personal finance. He currently does data and analytics for a wealth management company right here in New York City. So it was a pretty easy thing to set up and I'm really glad it worked out because I think a lot of his knowledge and a lot of his expertise is something that could really help a lot of young people that are trying to get their finances together and get their life in order, but you know maybe don't necessarily always know the right approach or um, where to go and what to do exactly um, and especially like strategies that would help them. So I'm really glad I got to sit down with him. We literally talk about everything from his blog to working, work-life balance, and um, in our opinions about personal finance education in schools and how we should you know, try to do that. Um, so definitely check out this video. If you have any comments or questions, please put them down below. You can always also request a specific topic that you want me to cover in a future video by calling me directly. The number is 774-231-8522. Um, and I'll go ahead and post your comment or your question. And then I will also put a video reply up on the channel for you. So without further ado, check out Nick Majuli. If you all don't know Nick, if you're not familiar with him, he writes a weekly blog called Of Dollars and Data, which is really fun to read and really interesting. So I'll start there. Like, why don't you tell us about like how did first of all how did you decide to like start writing a weekly blog? Because that's like a big commitment, right? And um and like where do you get like the ideas, content, inspiration, knowledge that you bring to? Because every week is something different, and like I'm always wondering like where does he come up with this stuff so where does it all come from and how did it start yeah so it started i think years ago just interested in personal finance i yeah. even had like a journal or a diary written down where i didn't really keep a journal but i had like a bunch of ideas for posts back in like 2014 so years ago i was okay. like i really like personal finance and investing i want to kind of talk about this but i never really did anything with it i couldn't find a, i didn't think i could find the right angle and then end of 2016 i was like you know what i really need to start like a side hustle side business type mm -hmm. thing so i started doing this and i'm like you know what? i'm just going to post once a week and just keep writing about stuff, you know, whatever I find interesting, right? And I just started posting, and I but said, "What I'm going to do?" Right? Like nobody yeah. knew. No one knew it was me because okay. okay. I was like, I, "If I fail, I'll fail quietly." <laughs> the way it's a I nice little. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. why YouTube is hard, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, it's not anonymous. I can't. You, I mean, you can wear a mask, I guess, but we're not <laughs> going to do that. Yeah, yeah no exactly. <laughs> so that's the thing. Yeah. So I started anonymous. So like, if I fail, I'll just be quiet. No one will even know about it, yeah. anyways. And started. Um, but yeah, and I, my angle was like, I'm going to do data analysis, and that's kind of a skill I have that a lot of people don't have, yeah, and that gives is. me a huge edge over people in terms of like writing new content, doing things that people can't do. You know, it's like, it's easy to make one chart, but if you have to make a hundred charts, so I started doing animations and stuff, yeah. you'll see on the blog, I kind of started doing that as well. But so yeah, so that's how I started, and then it evolved a lot, but how I got ideas, um, most of my stuff is just from reading, really, just reading a lot of books, reading a lot of articles, just... I, I really think, because especially, and I, I think one of the things that stops people from putting content out there is they're so afraid, like, oh, what if I don't have a new idea? That's actually true. Most people don't have new ideas. I don't even have that many new ideas. Maybe in all my blog posts, I maybe had one or two new ideas. Most of them, it's just a different perspective on an old idea, which can okay. be useful, right? Yeah. So that's kind of how I look at it. Like, that's new. Or yeah. Can spend, like, yeah. It's, it's like, remember, because like what your brain's good at doing is like connecting a bunch of disparate things yeah. together. So it's like, I have a personal set of experience. You have a personal set of experiences yeah. that like, if you and I see the same video or read the same article, we'll get ta totally different takeaways. Different takeaways yep. yeah. yeah. And so for me, that was like, okay, the more I read, I'm just basically throwing fuel on this fire, which is right. like my, my personal experience. And I'm going to go look at this and respond in a certain way and like yeah. some people happen to like those perspectives and you have to spend a lot of time thinking about like i spent about 10 hours a week 
on each post, right? So it's not easy to do. And I'm at a post 113 so now. So yeah, so it's like I'm over at a over a thousand hours now. So yeah. just just on blogging, right? So okay, so that sounds like a lot of time in two ways, right? One, there's like this pre work that you got to do, right? Because there's all this reading and like just kind of looking for constant content and inspiration. And then the 10 hours, obviously, on the actual labor of writing and thinking of ideas and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like you know, if you're 20 something, 30 something, watching my channel and you're thinking like, okay, goodness, this is like. I want to have this side hustle. I want to stay like up to date with all this stuff. I know I got to read, but like, I also want to like have a social life and like have time today and like see my family sometimes. Like, so how many hours do you like read? You spend 10 hours like working on it. You all have a job, like full time mm, job. Yeah. And then you want to like, you be social and stuff. So like, how do you like do it all? How do you, uh, you just have to spend time to do it. Yeah. And you have to find time to work out and like make food and all that, <laughs> and stuff. All that stuff. It's like, stuff it adds too, up, right? but you have to like find the time. I don't know. I'm like, I'm also like, I'm like a, I'm like probably on the edge in terms of like my work ethic and like I'm just really crazy like that I'm like kind of okay. extreme so like I'm not like a normal person in that sense but I like but I like it I'm saying like I really like working hard and doing yeah. that stuff like I don't really watch too much TV I've yeah. just started rewatching The Office and stuff but, like, office. that's very I know it's very recent but even then like I don't really watch much TV outside right. of that I don't watch television like I just spend all my time doing something which I consider productive whether that's like yeah. you know obviously as I said if I'm at the gym or I'm reading a book or I'm working or I'm going blog or I'm out with friends like it's all even like being out with friends I still consider that productive time yeah. so you just I mean, have to find the time and make it. Yeah, you just find where you're gonna have time in your life somewhere, and you have to cut it somewhere. I'm not, and I don't. You don't need to cut back on sleep, though. I do not recommend that at all. That's the last thing I would for, cut back for on. 2019. Yeah. That was actually. I don't do like. I don't know. I've never been good at New Year's, New Year's yeah. resolutions, yeah. but I read this book at the beginning of this year. Um, James Clear. Um, Atomic Habits. Yeah. I don't want to butcher the name. Atomic good. Habits. And it's so good because mm -hmm. it was like, stop focusing so much on goals and actually focus on routines. So my big like goal was to improve my routine for the mornings. And I started like looking up, looking into this and I found all these people like Sean Stevenson and like, all this stuff online about sleep being mm -hmm. like the big reason why your morning routine might not. It's actually your morning. The best morning starts the night before. Mm -hmm. And so then I was like, okay, so goodness, I have to like revamp my whole like bedtime routine, like sleep sleep routine, morning routine. And honestly, since I started doing that like around probably late December, early January, it's changed so much. Just mm -hmm. getting to bed early, getting a full eight hours of sleep, one, I mean, sometimes seven, but like seven yeah. to eight hours. And like, I feel more productive now that I spend more time sleeping. It's so mm -hmm. weird. So like, yeah, the fact that you mentioned sleep anyway, um, but back to what you were saying. So like just finding the time to like prioritize the things that are feel, that you feel productive mm -hmm. doing and that are going to be of quality use of your time yeah. rather than like, you know, watching TV. I mean, TV is okay, but like if you do too much of it, it's like, all right, you're going to drop yourself. Yeah. Crazy. And a lot of this is like, I'm just fortunate because I have a job where I only have to work 40 hours a week. Some people, if you have to work 50, 60, you're not going to yeah. do it or have two jobs or something. It's like really tough. So like, that's another thing. Like I'm doing this in a place from like, I used to work 50, 60 hours a week. and I didn't have time for a blog. When I first graduated college, I was just working a lot at a consulting firm and stuff. So like I couldn't do what I do now, but it's because I was able to do that, save money and do stuff that now I, I kind of have more free time to yeah. do this stuff now. Okay. So, you bought, you so bought even if you don't there. start now, it's fine. You can start later. It's like not a big deal. I didn't start the blog till I was 27. A lot of yeah. people think they have to come something right away. Like, no, take your time, like yeah, figure yeah. out what you want. And there's a lot of things you're doing. Like I, I really, I use the fire analogy a lot. Like, I mean, like, you're like, so what I was doing was gathering firewood for years without even realizing it. And then one day, like, you start your little fires, your little blog, your little project. No one really sees, no one cares. But then as you kind of keep adding yeah. fire, keep reading, keep adding ideas, it gets bigger and bigger. And so, yeah. so even the years where I wasn't doing anything productive, I was still building things. Even like now, I think, like, oh, I remember that from like years ago. I did this thing. Yeah. Like, I can bring it into a blog post. Yeah, now, I definitely so. relate to that because, like, I, I remember it was a struggle for me to get out of debt. I had, like, all, you know, my story, but, like, I had mm -hmm. all this credit card debt and I posted mm -hmm. about it on YouTube. But during mm -hmm. those those years of me just, like, or I mean, it wasn't that long, but, like, months and months and months of me, like, not spending money the way everybody around me was spending money, not shopping the way I was used to shopping before, like, just really making sacrifices and cutting back. But mm -hmm. all of that was teaching me, but I was becoming self disciplined and I was, be I was starting to, like, build self control and, like, mm -hmm. learn about ways to, you know, Know, just be more savvy around your money and so like all that was kind of practice for me to then be able to like share with people what I learned by doing that so like, in some ways it felt like I was making all these sacrifices but I was actually learning so much and then later when I started my channel I did not expect like people mm -hmm. to come in droves to my channel but it's like hey like I'm showing something that actually had results for me and works for me and so like even if it's rough and it's like a rough patch or like you're working on something you don't have a bunch going on it's mm -hmm. it could be leading up to something so like yeah mm -hmm. definitely i mean i can relate to that and soon my channel will hit 30k subs mm -hmm. so That's like great. hey we can can grow to something bigger than you might expect mm -hmm. um 
cool. So we talked about like managing your time. Um, really quickly before I move on from that though, I want to add like, how do you not get burnt out though? Because I know you only work 40 hours a week, mm. but you still have to manage all those things and you're like, find the time to do those things, but you're not like watching TV and like relaxing. And so like, how do you make sure that you don't get burned out if you you have such a hard a strong work ethic you work so hard mm -hmm. like can that you know get to a point where you're just like oh my goodness i need to take like a whole week off <laughs> uh, i mean i see what you're saying i can i can kind of agree with that and it really depends on your your personality there's a lot of things i but i procrastinate sometimes too like i don't want you to think like oh my blogs for the next 10 weeks right no my blogging for the next well, tuesday is not ready i have some ideas <laughs> yeah, of yeah, what yeah. i want to write about but like i procrastinate sometimes where i won't get things done to like you know, like, okay, maybe it's like a Sunday. I won't, I'm, sometimes I don't finish them until Monday night. Like, right in the blogs, do Tuesday, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like, it's due. It's like, do for See, me. See, but it's yeah. due. It is. Yeah. It is. That's so it's like, like personal. Like, yeah. So for me, it's like, just don't be so hard on yourself and yeah. just be like, just do your best and like, really just keep thinking about stuff till you figure it out. That's yeah. really the only thing I can say. Like, just spend your time and do it. I don't yeah. Know. I like that. You know? I, um, I try to post every Thursday. Mm -hmm. This past week, like, I was traveling. I was in Myrtle Beach. Like, I was doing all this stuff mm -hmm. for work and I, I had a video. I wanted to put it up. It, I didn't have the time to like edit the way I want like I was like you know what I'm gonna either kill myself and not get the sleep I need to post this on time by Thursday or I can skip it and post something on Saturday like yeah you know so for me I've learned slowly to like be okay with once in a while like obviously I don't want this to become a pattern but it's true you gotta like don't go crazy mm -hmm. you know what I mean so i um, definitely agree with that okay so recently we were um, on Twitter I saw um, Ramit post, Ramit Sethi, for those of you guys who don't know, who's like really big in personal finance, mm -hmm. has a whole brand called I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Mm -hmm. um, I posted about his book. I think it's a great book. There's obviously some things that I don't agree with or whatever, but like there's a lot of really good takeaways. Mm -hmm. But so he's really big on Twitter and social media and he posted something about like a couple of statements that um, you would think you could prove, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he said, common money beliefs that intuitively seem right but don't stand up to scrutiny. And so he has three beliefs. I'm just gonna talk about the first one, which yeah. I think is the one that we're gonna talk about. Yeah, yeah. He says, so this is a common belief that we, we it seems right, but it doesn't actually stand up to, to scrutiny. He said, quote, personal finance should be taught in high school. And so I commented on this. I was like, what do you mean by that? Like, why is that a problem? I think personal finance education is good, blah, blah, blah. And this started a whole storm of people replying, well, there's yes, evidence here. Yes, because I was on that, that storm. <laughs> there's a lot of people that got in on that. And I didn't even know about this, right. this some of this research, right? And so basically what a lot of people said, and I think there's mixed reasons for this, and I think it actually makes sense. I'm not saying that we can get into, we're going to get into yeah. this discussion right now, but basically a lot of a lot of research saying like, okay, a lot of personal finance education doesn't necessarily improve outcomes in the long term because, mm -hmm. you know, they looked at like, okay, that you give all these people education, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to ha have a higher income. So my philosophy on it, I'll be brief and then I'll no, you, no, no, give no. you, I think the issue is not necessarily knowledge. I think most of people always think it's like, oh, it's like people are poor because they don't know any better. Like, no, I think a lot of these people know, like, they just don't have the income. It's like as simple as that. Like I've looked at the data from the BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, yeah, yeah, yeah. and 40% of Americans cannot save money. They literally just, if you just look at their basics, like yeah. housing, transportation, yeah. healthcare, and food, those four, yeah. and those remember, there's four a, that doesn't include having a phone, no. doesn't include Those are the four else, biggest, but there's right? a lot of I don't stuff. include education, I include nothing. Just those four, those four alone eat up their entire, like they have to go into debt. There's absolutely no way. They don't save money, basically. And especially the bottom 20%, it's just really awful. So right. you look at the data and there's just no way they can save money. And it's a simple income problem. And so it's like, oh yeah, just make more money. Of course, that's like the, you know, it's easy to say that. It's not easy to actually get more people to make more money, but it's right. like, that's really the issue. I don't really think it's like, oh, it's because they're too stupid or they don't have education. Like, I don't really think that's the cause. I think the cause is really even like they know the math, but like what can you do if you just don't have the money in your bank account? There's like nothing you can yeah, do. You have yeah, no yeah. choice, right? Like, that's interesting. Like I, I definitely, I agree with that, but that like for me, that's not like my, that mm -hmm. wasn't my immediate like inclination was to think like, oh, this is why. Mm -hmm. For me, I was like, okay, all these studies show that the financial education that has been provided so far in the past, like, hasn't worked mm -hmm. so i was like okay a the way they're teaching it probably wasn't like as mm -hmm. effective as it could be so we need to change the way it's being taught but mm -hmm. also be like you can teach people what they need to know like that content mm -hmm. but if they're not able to practice the application like practice applying what they learned then they're not going to be able to actually put it into their lives mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a way that's actually going to work or that's going to be like you know part of their real lived experience mm -hmm. so it's like you can, for example, now, like I go to schools a lot and I talk about, you know, how I, I go to, to different schools, high schools, colleges, talk to a lot of young people about money and I'll sit there and like teach them all about investing and saving and all this stuff. And it's like, if they don't, if they're not given the opportunity to actually practice that, 
it's gonna go in one ear and out the other, or it's just gonna like eventually with time it'll be forgotten and it won't like they won't be able to take advantage of any of the stuff mm -hmm. they learned. I would never argue that teaching somebody more uh, content knowledge or like edu educating people is bad or it's like mm -hmm. gonna hurt them. Like I don't think it's gonna hurt. If anything, mm -hmm. I think it's the way that we're teaching it. How do you create something then that makes sure that people do what is best, even if they like don't know that they're doing it. So like nudge investing um, mm -hmm. is a huge thing in the fintech space right now, but also like what else can happen like to change people's like environment or to change people's like uh, routines and habits around money so that they kind of, they're, they're getting the outcome that's desired, but without kind of like really putting in the work or realizing it or even thinking about it much, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I was reading about was um, government benefits, right? You give people food stamps, it comes in once a month. Mm -hmm. So now you get a lump sum of whatever, $400, $500. You get this false sense of like uh, abundance. You mm -hmm. think like, oh, boom. Like, I, So then next week you have no money for groceries because you, you went and spent like $500. So if you instead say, we're going to give you $400, but instead of giving it to you in a lump sum once a month, we're going to give you $100 every week. Mm -hmm. And that, studies have shown that like, that results in a surplus. People mm -hmm. have like 20, 30 bucks left over. Mm -hmm. Even though it's the same amount of money, mm -hmm. it's just that the, the time in which, the, like, you know, whatever the environment, I guess, right, mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, like, how we could think more about how in education, how could we incorporate that? Like, it's mm -hmm. not that people don't know what they need to do, it's that they don't know how to implement it in their lives. Yeah. It sounds like a behavioral thing. Exactly. Like how to, yes. But it's like behavior is so complex because, like, certain people, are probably doing fine with the lump sum payment yeah. and they're probably doing maybe fine with the with the weekly payment too but it's like there's other set of people that aren't and it's like trying to figure out like how do we do a one size fits all behavior mechanism right. that it, it doesn't those always work, work right like certain people like them. certain people that you know watch this channel maybe like they're more ambitious and go out there they're trying to you know better themselves yeah, in terms of learning more so like they're maybe more likely to be do it yourselfers anyways. Like the people that actually need our help the most are probably not even watching, know, right? That's the issue. You gotta right? find them. Yeah, it's like the people, <laughs> like the people that need the most help with investing aren't reading investing blogs most likely, right? It's like I think about this and it's like I want to reach those people, but how do I yeah. do that? I don't know. I don't, you know, I get an so Instagram hard. channel and something, but it doesn't really work. I know. You know? That's so, why. I, I mean, I think for me that was one of the big reasons mm -hmm. why, on top of YouTube, I started going to schools because I realized like. The kids in those schools are the kids that have the opportunity to learn this before they turn 18, but they're not YouTubing, you know, investing, mm -hmm. dollar cost averaging. They're not investing these things, searching up these things. Yeah. So for me, I was like, let me get in front of them and catch their attention and let them know like, hey, this is really important. And you're probably, you know, you're looking up Kylie Jenner and Kim Kardashian mm -hmm. and Kanye West, but you need to be paying attention to this too. So like, I think that's a really important part of why I have such a passion for doing that. It's like what, like what you said, it's like we gotta get in front of people who aren't searching for this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But it's really hard because like there's just so many different types of like ideas around how you teach this and what you, you know, you don't wanna like, personal finance is so personal. Mm -hmm. So when I get in front of kids, sometimes they raise their hand and ask me like, well, where should I bank? Where should I put my money or where should mm -hmm. I? And I'm like, you know, that's your, that's why you have to make the decision. I'm giving mm -hmm. you all the information mm -hmm. and then you have to like analyze it and kind of decide what's best for you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I guess because it's so personal, it's kind of hard to like make recommendations for people or like figure out what's, uh, you know, how to teach something in a way that's fair to everyone and that's not biased. Yeah, you know I mean? exactly. I agree with that completely. It's, it's really so personal and, it, and so any sort of nudges we try to make in people's lives are going to be very effective for some people and very ineffective for others. So it's like, and every, like, there's no, some, and this is what's so tough about even investing. Like, you'd be like, oh yeah, here's what you need. Just buy this and don't, look, you know, don't look at it. But if, what if you peak one day and then you panic and sell? I mean, all sorts of stuff can happen. So I can try and tell you to do X, Y, and Z. And if, you know, every person is going to react to that same that same yeah. kind of diet differently, so yeah, and that's the true. issue. So. Is yeah, exactly. It's diet. It's like the same thing mm -hmm. with food too. Like every, you know, it's such a good, uh, good um, mm -hmm. analogy. Mm -hmm. um, all right, cool. So a couple more things um, before we wrap up. I definitely want us to talk about um, like some tips for young people who are interested in getting started, but don't like. This is one of the channels I'm sure that you like whoever's watching watches, but there's mm -hmm. so many like websites, blogs, like books, TED talks, like videos on YouTube channels, mm -hmm. like it can kind of be overwhelming and it's a little bit like the decision paralysis because like, geez, I don't know this person saying that this person there's so much and it kind of just makes you frozen and you don't even act. But if they're in that place and they do want to take like a first step, what are like one or two or three things that we could say, like, this is what you should prioritize doing to just get started. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so maybe thinking about like 20 something 30 something that's like who my you know my channel targets and maybe not making a ton of money just maybe handling like a couple thousand dollars of credit card debt and you're getting rid of it we Re uh -huh. recently tackled that and just trying to get into like wealth building uh -huh. right what would what would you say i would say yeah first get rid of your debt i mean obvious that seems obvious you probably talk about this a yeah. lot but like Start, even before you do that, start researching, start understanding stocks and investing. I mean, I know you're not going to be there yet. You're not going to have a lot of money to invest, so yeah. it's not going to really do too much for you. Even like if you put $100 in there and you got 10%, you know, you're getting $10 a year, which is like nothing. Like you right. literally just don't buy Starbucks twice or something. I mean, it's like, it's such a, like your savings and your spending are far more important than your investing or especially early on when you don't have as much money. So the main thing is I would just expose myself to those things and find, find a source you trust. So maybe must be helpful or someone and see what she, data yeah, too, who, right? who she recommends or who someone recommends because that's it's a good way to funnel out. She's right. There's so much content out there right. and it's like, what's the best stuff I want to read for? And it depends on what, like I write on a bunch of different content. A lot of the stuff's not going to be applicable to, be, to you at all in all honesty. Like, but it's like finding like, what's the type of content I need to find and then kind of finding those resources I yeah. think is yeah. the main thing. But anyone who's just getting started, like. Just learn. I mean, that's like that's that stuff's gonna stay with you for your whole life. And even if you don't have the income now, and you're still getting out of you know debt or whatever. You can still do that and then get a lot more from yeah. it later. So I, I mean, I like what you're saying because it's basically like if if we focus too much on building our financial capital and we don't remember that human capital is just as important mm -hmm. like building up human capital essentially your skills your knowledge what skill set do you bring to the table yeah you might be in a lot of debt but if you spend a lot of time learning once you get out of debt you know you're going to be able to take that knowledge and like go places because now you're you know you don't have as much money in you know in debt holding you back um so that definitely is is huge so what are your most trusted sources like where do you go when you want to learn when you want to read when you want to be in the know like what should people like kind of take away like oh, okay i want to learn what are like two or three good places that i can go that i that i know i'll, I'll be able to learn and it'll it'll be like a good resource for me like a, a strong resource yeah so I'm, I'm biased but i use twitter a lot because news breaks there i see mm -hmm. a lot of stuff so like obviously there's like a lot, a lot of funny content there but also like there's a lot of when something comes out it's a great article it'll get shared a lot it'll get retweeted yeah, it'll get a lot of stuff true. that you can a lot of favorites likes whatever yeah, and true. you'll see that stuff and you're like okay maybe i should check this out and so it's like it gives you a signal for how many people have looked at it and i'm, I'm not saying like everything the greatest stuff is always the most retweeted and like that's not actually true a lot of my favorite articles just you know they yeah. just like they come out and they're great and everything and i really they speak to me a lot more than other people and so like you have to realize like not everything's just going to be the most popular thing like at one time i remember there was this famous uh reddit thread where they were like this person was like retiring and their dad or their dad was retiring and like oh they own GE and like 80% of his net worth was in one stock and the top comment the top like most the best advice was like oh GE pays a great dividend just hold on to it it's already at an all-time low it can't go any lower that's what they said and it was very upvoted and then G, if you guys have followed GE at all that stock is basically cratered and so that person like ended up losing a lot of money by following the most upvoted, most popular advice so you got to be careful out there like you never know I'm not saying everything that's the most popular is always right but just like yeah. I mean, you gotta it vet it some ways. Yeah, it, it gives you a, a gauge. Generally, that's correct, but yeah, you gotta be careful. So. Yeah, no, I, I can, I can mm -hmm. do that. I kind of get overwhelmed by Twitter, so I stay away. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm new to Twitter. Like, I, you were one of my first Twitter friends, which I'm so glad we connected. That's how I found there. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you then I was like, yeah. I just feel like there's so much on there that sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, there's so much noise. There's you gotta noise curate. Things. You gotta curate. Figure out who you trust, who you don't trust, and you. And once you interact with the community a lot more, you kind of learn the rules, the etiquette. I mean, there's no actual rules, but like etiquette of how you respond to people. And people who don't respond, all sorts of stuff, because there's yeah. trolls and so all that stuff. But you got to learn all that, you know how it yeah, works. So. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly slow to the Twitter game. Yeah. But, um, all right, cool. So two last things, like I would love to. Uh, first of all, before we we end, like I want you to share, like where can people find you? Um, your blog is one thing that we mentioned, but like where can they give each out if they want to and get in touch with you and mm -hmm. where you where you are online? Yeah. So my website's of dollarsanddata.com, just of dollarsanddata.com. Uh, one word, you can just search of dollars and data on Google, you'll find me. Uh, she'll probably put my name in the description. Yeah, but on awesome. top of that, uh, if you want to reach out to me about anything, just go to Twitter. I mean, I need to create an account, but just DM. My DMs are open for anyone. Just send me a DM. I will. I usually answer all of them very quickly. So um, yeah, just send me a DM and go from there. I guess. I mean, that's the best way to reach me, and I'm always on there. So just checking stuff. So yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I definitely want one last thing because I feel like for a lot of my audience, like they mm -hmm. will kind of you know reach out and say like, oh, I want to know like the biggest like hack that you have in terms of like really transforming your like your finances so like you're you're in this place and you feel like you're swamped or like maybe you just don't have like a full control over your finances what's like if we could say like one hack that you could put in place uh what do you think that like your hack would be uh i mean i think automating helps a lot automating. you have to think about i think if only one hack i mean that's the 
that's like that would be applicable to everyone. That oh, the one thing that's applicable for like a subset of you is like I would say learn to program. And I think there's a lot like there's a place called Lambda School out there, L A M B D A School. Okay. I think L A M B D A. Yeah, Lambda School. And basically. If you're like interested in coding and programming and doing that, if you're like that seems like your wheelhouse, I recommend them. And they cool. will actually pay. They you go to school for free, but then after once you get a job that pays enough, they take a percentage of your earnings. So uh, they so only they make money know. if you make money. So that's yeah. like, that's the cool thing. It's a very different yeah. way versus like here's your debt, you have to pay it off, yeah. and you don't Whether have a you job, have a right? Yeah. So it's a much better model, and I actually like it a lot better because now it's like and there's people that literally are making minimum wage or a little bit above minimum wage, and they're going to make a hundred and twenty thousand dollars, like. Incredible. Because of this, you know, it's six month, yeah. eighteen month program. I mean, the programs are different, but it's like, and it's just you have to obviously show some aptitude and get into working and programming and doing all that. Spend some time doing it, and if you get accepted, I really think it can change your life. So awesome. I didn't do that, but I, I see the results. I believe it's real, and it's. So I mean, it's not going to be easy, but hey, I mean, it's going to give you a lot of you know flexibility. Yeah. So I, right. I recommend something like that. Um, I think that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, thanks for tuning in, you guys. This mm -hmm. is just one of the ways that I want to just share and mm -hmm. showcase like more young people's voices mm -hmm. on the channel. There are a lot of young people in the personal finance space who are really knowledgeable and engaging and smart. Mm -hmm. And I just want to kind of start sharing some of those voices. So check out Nick. I'm going to post all that stuff in the description box below. Um, and that's it. Till yeah. next time. And thank you for having me. Thank you yes. for having me. I thank appreciate you for being it. Right. So this was really yeah. fun. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, thank you guys. <laughs>